ChatGPT is fantastic in helping us with all sorts of Excel operations. Today, we're going to use formulas. We're going to create graphs. We are going to apply advanced VBA code, all just by using our words to get the result. So ChatGPT is our assistant today. And the data that we're going to use is this CSV file. CSV just means that the columns are comma separated. You can download this CSV file in the description below. I recommend you doing so, then you can do this exercise with me. You will learn much faster. So here we have employee name, number of days worked, number of sick days and note, these are the four columns. And we have rows of data. These are all sample data, don't worry. And during import, I want to get rid of this node column. So we're going to add, ask ChatGPT for help with everything today. You will see how powerful that is. So if I go down to ChatGPT and then I say, what's the best method to import CSV data to Excel? And then I can say, I need to remove a column during import. Then I press enter and ChatGPT will create a guide for me. This is very, very powerful. So here it says using Power Query to import and remove a column. We need to open Excel. We already did that. Then we need to go to get and transform data and choose from text CSV. We will select the file in the pop up. And then we're going to click on transform data in the Power Query editor. We're going to right click a column header and choose remove and finally close and load. We're even getting an alternative method, but let's just stick here. So I go to Excel, let me maximize it. So we needed to click on data. That's what ChatGPT told us. And then we're choosing from text CSV. And imagine how powerful this is. This might not be something that I knew of before working with ChatGPT. I don't need to take a course or ask a colleague. I can just work with ChatGPT using my own natural English words. I placed mine on my desktop. So here I'm saying import. And then ChatGPT told me to transform data. Click this one here. And that was because we needed to get rid of a column. Then this Power Query editor opens up. We needed to right click on node and pick remove. So now we remove the column and when we click close and load here, as ChatGPT told us, then we have a table, bingo, it's that easy to get help from ChatGPT. Let's create two more columns so we can apply some formulas. Let me close it over here. Click the first row here, number of sick days, right click, insert table column to the right. We're going to repeat this and you can use the keyboard shortcut control Y or just do it again. Then we have two columns. I like these keyboard shortcuts. These speed up your day. Click in the first column header up here in D. We're going to change that to absence rate. Do the same with E. And here we're saying high absence. I also want to make them a little bit wider. So double click here between D and E and between E and F. Now we will find some formulas to get the data here and here the magic begins. Try to mark these. Control C to copy this. Then we go to ChatGPT. Let's make a new chat since this is really not about importing a CSV. Now we're going to get formula help. So I click new chat here. And then the first thing I do, ensure that you are in the GPT-4 default, then I can control V. Here you can see that I get my headers. I imagine that, but I'm also getting a screenshot up here. I can click this and yes, these are my column names. So I can delete these and just let ChatGPT interpret the image. And here I'm going to uh, create a prompt and make ChatGPT read this image. and. I will make ChatGPT itself figure out the relationship between these columns to give me a formula. And this is really clever. So here I'm just saying my Excel table got the column headers as seen on the attached image. And then I can say just to specify column A is 
employee name. And this is just to make sure that I get a precise output because uh, there's no place here in this screenshot that says that this is column A. So just to be completely sure. And then I want to say, which formula should I use to calculate absence for each row? Send the prompt um, to ChatGPT. Look how fast it is. And here we can see that um, ChatGPT starts to read our screenshot. And this is quite cool. Now, just based on the column headers, it figure out which kind of relationship there is between them, these columns, and then it will create a, um, a formula. And let us say that um, uh, it even gives us an explanation. It says that this is the formula that we want to use. And then it applies an Excel formula. It says C2 divided by B2 times 100. And let us try to go with that. And here it, it also says that for high absence column, it seems that you would like to be marking which employees have an high absence rate higher than a certain threshold. And let us just uh, wait with that. Let's take one at a time. So here I will copy this code, we'll go back here, and then you can just go up here to the first row in the D column, press Control V, and yes, now we have a working formula. I think here that we have too many decimal places. I only want like two. So if I go back here, and here we can see that ChatGPT is still generating. I can press stop generating here because I'm not going to use any of this. I might be, but I want to make sure that I have specified my problem. Now it's also finished. And here I want to tell ChatGPT that I went with this formula and then I want two decimal places. So I just copy code here again, just to make sure that it's in my clipboard it is. But if you've done something in the meantime, it will not be there. So here I want to say I used this formula. Then I press Shift Enter a couple of times. And here I will Control V in this formula. I can make Shift Enter one time more. So I separated this formula. And then I want to say um, edit the formula to reduce the output to two decimal places. So I literally just specify my problem with English words and then ChatGPT starts working. To limit the number of decimal places, you can use the round function in Excel. It even gives us alternatives. So here it says that round C2 divided by B2 and it says that I should use that function. Imagine how powerful this is. This is a formula that I don't know about. Um, and it just give me just based on my own English words. It also give me alternatives you can see here, but I'll just copy code. And I will go back here. And instead of this, then I like to go up here. So you can just delete it. You could also do it in the cell, but it will get a little bit more easy to read up there. And then I press enter. Now we have two decimal places. Isn't that really, really smart? We just did nothing. We just have our own words. And let's say that um, I also want to let me go back here. I also want to fill in the high absence rate column. So here um, I say this is great. And then I can say I have calculated the and then I say absence rate in column D. So just giving a little bit of context, then I want to say in column E, I want it marked as and I say high absence. So ChatGPT actually helped us in the first prompt, but it didn't really have any input. So here I'm specifying exactly what I wanted to do. I want it marked as high absence if the absence rate is above three. And then I want to say a normal absence if it is three or lower. And this is just um, completely randomized um, limits, but uh, you can easily change them. Then I want to say, can you give me the formula? 
And here I want the formula for column E. ChatGPT starts generating, and let me just show you the Excel. So you can place your mouse here, ready to paste in. These are what we want to have marked as either high absence or normal absence. Certainly, now we can use the if function. Not only does ChatGPT help you with these Excel formulas, but you're also getting a complete introduction and even advanced introduction to the formulas. You will learn so much just by working with ChatGPT and Excel. I really encourage you to do so. You will get all these explanations. And even if you want to work more with the ifs, you can ask ChatGPT follow up questions just to explain you everything about the if. Let us try it. So I just copy code here from this. I go back and now I'm in here in the first row in the E column. I press Control V and there you go. If the absence rate here in column D is higher than three, then it's high absence, otherwise normal. And again, we're just doing this with our own words. So now let's say we want to do a graph. I go to ChatGPT. So here, and again, I can use the same context. So here I can say, how do I create a box plot to visualize the absence rate in, and I want to have this single quotation mark in column D. So let's say that I don't know how to write these graphs. ChatGPT will now give me the answer. And yes, I'm so big a fan to create a box plot, also known as a box and whisker plot in Excel for the absence rate. Now we get all the steps included here. First, select the, the range of the data for the absence rate. And then we want to, if your data starts from cell D2, select from D2 down to the last entry. So here, we apparently, we should not use the header. Then we want to go to insert. And then we want to find box and Vishka and we can even formatting the box plot. Let's do one at a time. So it says that I needed to go to data or insert, sorry. And then here I needed to find something called box and whisker. And yes, uh, these don't have names. So I can either click this one here and go to all charge. And here I can see the box and whisker. So that is the one I use. ChatGPT guided me to this. I can press OK. And here we have a box and whisker, but I forgot to specify the data. So no problem. I'll just press Control Z. I'll do this. Control Shift down on the D. And again, ChatGPT is only as good as I am. So here I will just mark the data. Control Shift down in the first. Uh, by having a mouse in the first cell. And then I want to go to insert. I click this arrow here. And then I want to go to all charts, box and whisker. Okay, now we have a box plot. So follow chat GPT steps and don't do like me and be in the wrong cell. That will give you a graph, a graph that we again just formalize by words. Let's see the most advanced thing of this guide. Please don't skip it. This will be so powerful. Yes, we're going to be programmers, all of us, even if you don't know any code, this will be eye opening for you. So here, I want to have these uh, values color coded based on the value of them. So if there's half like green, if they are two or uh, less yellow, if it's between between two and three, and if they are above three, we want to paint them red. First of all, we need a developer tab up here. If you don't see it, then go to file, go to options, go to customize ribbon. And over here to the right, scroll a little bit down and here you will find a developer that is unticked. It might, if you're using it in another language, then it will just be in your regular language. Mark this press OK. And now you will see the develop tab Developer tab up here. We're going to use that to apply code to this Excel sheet. We go to ChatGPT. So here we can say create a VBA code that colors the cells in the absence rate column. And again, I can say column D, just to make sure that ChatGPT still have that context. Then I say, depending on the size of the absence, colon, 
shift enter, shift enter two times, and I want to say green for absences less than or equal to two. Shift enter. I don't need to have it as um, this bulleted format, but it's easier for ChatGPT to interpret and it's easier for me to debug if I did something wrong. So then I say yellow for absences between two and three. Shift enter. I say red for absences greater than or equal to three. Shift enter two times and then I can say my Excel sheet contains column names and the tab is called employee absence. If it is, let's just see what it's called. Employee absence without a space. So I'll just do this. I will send the prompt. And here ChatGPT will create the VBA script. I will say I'm a developer myself, so I use a lot of code and ChatGPT is next to none in this. So now if you don't work with code in your daily life, you now have a programmer that you can just instruct by using your own English words. This is so powerful. Here it gives us a guide to apply this VBA code. I will show you, but otherwise you can find use this. This is as good as me. Maybe my, I'm as a YouTuber slash teacher, I teach ChatGPT and software automation in my daily life. Maybe I will uh, be redundant in the long run. And that is because ChatGPT is so powerful in helping you. So uh, let's see. But if you like what you see here, then please give this video a thumbs up. That will really help me a lot to get it out to more people. Thank you. So here we have the code. And here we can see that the sheet name is called employee absence. I will not tire you with all this, but this is just a, a working code, really impressive. It finds the range of the data and then it starts calling it. It doesn't do anything now, it's just generating the code. But after it have after it's finished, we can copy the code directly to Excel and apply it. Of course, it's just a simple example this. We can do much more advanced VBA. So now when you see this end sub, we're done. We can press copy code here to copy it over, we go to Excel. Now you go to developer, you click Visual Basic, go up here, right click, insert module, then you just press Control V to paste in the VBA script and I can run this. There you go. Your cells will be colored. Isn't that nice? So here you learned about how to apply uh, the formulas that you get from ChatGPT to Excel. We made graphs and we made advanced VBA code. Your next lesson is right here. Great job in this. See you.